The Crypto Markets Update is brought to you by KuCoin, the best place to find the next crypto gem. It might seem like there's some green on the screen, but whether or not that lasts, that depends on what the market does. Joining us now to discuss that is Li Zhang. She is Chief Financial Officer at Huabi. Good morning and welcome back, Lily. Good morning, everyone. Hi. I, so, I, as I mentioned before, we, we were up on the day, but we keep getting news that some of the biggest players in crypto and a lot of very large investors have been getting hurt, were hurt by the Luna debacle uh, of the past week. Um, do you think that's going to affect the upside potential in crypto for, the, for the, at least the short and medium term? Are you seeing investors shy away from taking on those big positions that they did before? Yeah, actually, in the past week, uh, Luna has a very big influence to the total market. Uh, Luna today may be something like uh, the largest Mimi coin, like, like Shiba in the world. Uh, so today, Luna still has the largest transaction volume in the market. But uh, so many investors, they lost, they lost money in the past week. Uh, actually, uh, at the peak point, Luna own over 40 billion US dollars, but today, maybe just to, uh, two or three billion. That's uh, so. Um, Hundred millions US, uh, investors they lost their money. Of course, uh, it it have a very bad impact to the uh, market's uh, confidence, especially to those institutional uh, developer uh, institutional investors. Uh, some institutional investors like Hashed, they have news. Maybe they lost over three billion US dollars. Okay. Uh, Mm, for this kind of institutional investors, they will have, uh, they must have time to recover. Uh, and uh, many uh, very small customers, small investors, they also lost ma- uh, their, their money in Luna. So uh, they are looking forward for the new proposal of DK. Maybe they have some compensation to the investors. Nonetheless, do you, are, are you seeing even the retail investors, um, are, are they more afraid of, of investing now? Uh, do you see that their trade sizes are smaller, for instance? Do you see any kind of action on behalf of the smaller investors um, that they were hurt tremendously by Luna? Um, that's true. Uh, from the data side, uh, the total market dropped a lot. Uh, Luna is one of the reasons, and also the Bitcoin price, Ethereum price, they dropped down. So from the data, we can see the total uh, tra- uh, trading world or trading retail customers they become less than the week before. Uh, maybe there's some influence because of the Luna. Uh, I think uh, for retail uh, customers, some of them would like to. They don't have enough knowledge about. Uh, uh, Luna. So maybe they buy at a very high price. Uh, when Luna dropped maybe 30 or uh, 70%, some of them just buy some Luna, bought some Luna, uh, and then Luna dropped another 99%. So some of them lost uh, money in the past week. Lily, I want to turn the conversation over to China a little bit, um, a market that you know very well. Um, and I actually want to ask you a little bit about NFTs, um, because uh, I think something that a lot of people are not aware of is that NFTs are actually quite big in China. Um, they're, they have sort of a different name. They're called more like digital collectibles. But um, I, I would just be really interested to hear your take on that market in China, because in the U.S., It's cooling down a little bit, the NFT market. Um, But in China, is that the case? What do you see the prospects for the NFT market in China? And is it still very hot right now? Yeah, actually, the NFT market in China is still very, very hot. Uh, Because, you know, last year, the Chinese government uh, has uh, a very... Uh, a very negative attitude toward the crypto exchange and the crypto uh, trading, but there is no unique policy about NFT market. That means you can do something about the NFT market. So uh, people they will use something like yeah digital asset uh, to to uh, to uh, to have NFT. 
uh, today, uh, I, I can see millions of transactions in China every day for IFT, IFTs, and uh, there are very popular platforms in China. Uh, like Huobi uh, has incubated uh, iBox in the past, and they, we, we sell out because we quit the Chinese market. And the new shareholder, they, they have brought the iBox platform to the largest one in China. Do you plan to bring um, sort of NFT selling onto the platform as well? Or digital collectible selling, rather? <laughs> Uh, actually, for mm -hmm. Hobi, we have quit uh, the Chinese market. So uh, we don't plan to sell any NFT products in China, but we plan to sell some IP or NFT products in Hobi Global, uh, just outside of Chinese market. You know, we also just learned that China mining is doing incredibly well despite a ban. They're second in the world in hash rate, about 20%. And I wonder, you know, what are your thoughts on that? And is that also the same with other aspects of crypto, such as trading and such? Uh, actually, I haven't uh, seen any policy change in China, maybe to reopen the mining uh, someday or just in recent months. So uh, in the past year, uh, I think, uh, most of Chinese miners, they have moved their mining machine outside of China to many countries. For example, US, the USA is the largest one uh, for Chinese miners to mine. Uh, and uh, I think um, today the total mining uh, hash has uh, come back to the uh, Chinese policy, uh, before the Chinese policy. And uh, that, that's because uh, I think most Chinese miners they have found they have find, found the proper place outside of China in many countries for their mining. Uh, maybe uh, China can reopen the mining uh, in the long term, but no, I, I don't think we're not in next six or one year, six months or one year yet. Okay. Well, I believe the report from Cambridge was that there is still mining going on inside China despite the ban. And it's uh, very lucrative. I, I mean, 20% of the hash rate in the world, which is interesting. But aside from that, uh, I, we just had Justin Sun on. He was talking about USDD. I know you're friends with Justin Sun, but with the whole collapse of Terra Luna and UST, do you think listing USDD on Huobi is risky and you know are there concerns about the same fate befalling befalling usdd uh actually yeah we we talked a lot about usdd uh of course we have to uh, let our investors know what about the risks of usdd uh just last week i talked with justin about the leverage of usdd we don't want uh, so so much so many leverage with USDD that's quite risky, and besides that, you uh, Luna is may, maybe the only backup of uh, UST. That's quite risky. So we want to keep the liquidity. We always have a, a look at uh, the USDT situation, uh, but in another way, uh, we we also want to know whether it's possible to have a successful algorithm uh, stable coin. Uh, we are looking at that. Uh, because you know, uh, for crypto, uh, it's something about technical innovation. So we want to know whether algorithm innovation they can uh, bring up a new successful your um, uh, stable coin. So we want to uh, uh, keep our eyes on that. <laughs>